Hello. Hello. So number five. We're on number five. Oh, nearly there. <laughs> Not nearly there. Halfway there. That's well, nearly there. Isn't it? <laughs> okay. It's further forward. No, it's about the middle, isn't it? <laughs> number five, as in the top ten reasons for failing the driving test. So this is what we're doing at the moment for those of you guys that are just cottoning on five weeks after we've started. Catch up, um, catch up. <laughs> we are taking um, the latest reasons that the DVSA have, uh, have um, released for. Uh, why are people's failed driving tests and each week we're looking at these so just to remind everybody we have number one junctions observation number two mirrors change direction three is control and steering four is junctions turning right five is moving off safely so that's today's one we're going to do uh, six response to signs traffic lights seven move off control uh, eight, positioning normal driving. Nine, response to signs, road markings. And ten is reverse park control. Okay, can I say something about this? As we go further down the list, they're going to, obviously because there's seven, eight, nine, they're going to happen not as much as obviously the others. I personally would like to know the percentages because that's just the way I am. But because we don't know, number nine might be just very, very occasionally. For example, we don't know. Do we? So um, I'm surprised that this one is where it is. I thought it would be higher up, personally. Do you think what, moving that? off safely? Yeah. Well, maybe it's about right. I think that moving off safely, and we look at why, why, what exactly that means, so we'll talk about that in a minute, quite a lot of it maybe comes into judgement. So actually, yeah. if you've got a people who's lacking experience and experience, judgment obviously comes with experience. Um, it, it could be that. But let's look. Mm. Let's look at that. So, um, as always, I um, asked my little group of friendly examiners to give us the. Um, uh, on the shop floor version of why they think that this is happening and why this is in the top 10 and uh, it probably won't surprise you to know that this comes on uh, uh, comes down to the good old blind spot check or lack of shall we mm. say this is probably the first one that's come into what i thought it meant what it meant some of the others yeah. weren't quite what we thought yeah. they meant were they yeah. as people know by watching the others but this is the one that i'm happy that exactly as I would mark it myself in a mock test or perceive it as an instructor is what it is yeah and it, as you say it's that it's even not looking isn't it when they pull away or looking too early and therefore missing something or looking and not seeing mm -hmm. really isn't it mm -hmm. which yeah. all this which aren't the same yeah. things really now the two other things they said as well as the lack of blind spot is um, moving off with the left signal on and causing various degrees of chaos quote unquote mm. so leave that one for you to, to work out well, I, I think if you again I think that's tied into the observations because if your observations are good and you're not pulling away when there's no one there then that wouldn't be a failure in my mind it would be a minor or a driving fault because there's no one there to cause chaos to so I think it's sort of if it happens with the lack of observation, it can cause more problems than just lack of observation. Does that sort of well, make sense? Well, it does, but equally, if you're moving off with a left signal on, mm -hmm. you're telling everybody that you're not moving. Yeah, but if you look around and there's no one there, then it's not a problem. Really. Yeah, but then this comes into the argument of putting on a, a right signal and whether we're begging to come out or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the issue is the left signal to start with right, has yeah. been understood by others to mean that you're not going and then you do and that yeah, causes the chaos. I get that, yeah. yeah. Especially if there's pedestrians more than other road users because mm -hmm. you'd be waiting for them anyway. Yeah. And the third one is moving off having misjudged the speed perhaps of other people and causing other people to to then have to react to slow down, them. stop, swerve, yeah. swear, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's just take the blind spot for for example. Now this is a classic one that we know happens in terms of uh, those of you who've been driving for a while will know what we mean when we use the word mirroring. So in other words, we do something and our pupils will almost react to our behaviour, not necessarily be prompted to do it for themselves. So by us doing a blind spot check, it prompts them to do a blind spot check. Now, again, those of you that have sat in on driving tests will know that when it comes to an examiner doing a blind spot check, when a pupil moves off from the side of the road, the examiner will delay it and delay it and delay it until the point where the pupil has checked a blind spot and head is moving back and then they check they do not check before a people checks and if they do check before a people checks it's because the people wasn't doing it and hadn't done it in time yeah, and the examiner of course is they know something's judgment. going on yeah. we've seen that motorbike or whatever yeah 
So of course that's what happens is that we can be lured into this false sense as instructors mm. that our pupils do blind spot checks. They always do it when we're there. Well, that's because we always do it. Yeah, exactly. So you're so. doing it rather than them, even though they are doing it. So that's, I think that's a really valid point. I think that's mm. that's the big takeaway from this one. And we, we know that from sitting on the lessons all the time yeah. and sitting on the standards checks, particularly your part threes, it certainly gets marked down on those two, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're doing it before at the same time as the people, you, you will get marked down for that mm -hmm. because and as I say, as Lou said, you know, so well, they always do on lessons, why don't they do on tests? Well, because they're not doing it independently mm -hmm. and they are independent on tests. Mm -hmm. And that's for some other things as well, which I'm sure we'll cover in other yeah. videos. Yeah. The issue with moving off the left signal, now that's a really interesting one, and I know both of us teach this is fairly similar from, mm. from our point of view. We are, we're not your routine pull up on the left, middle mirror, left mirror, pop a left signal on, move into the left. Mm. We do a middle mirror, left mirror, have a general good look around, is there anybody who's going to benefit from a signal? If not, we don't put a signal on. And I think that what happens is that makes the routine of yeah. sticking a signal on when moving in, because of course that's where your left signals come from, mm. makes it then less possible for that left signal to be on. And they just don't know it's on, do they? They don't hear it, we know that they don't mm. hear it. Um, and it also stops the routine of middle mirror, right mirror, blind spot, signal, you know, that kind of routine rather than it being a thinking process. Yeah, I think it's also worth bringing to the pupils that have a routine when they stop. So it can be um, handbrake neutral indicator, you're working your way up. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is to, to say to your pupils that if the examiner takes a little time to tell you to pull away, it could be they're just waiting for you to knock your signal off. I've certainly sat there and the examiner's just given them a little bit of time to knock that signal off before they say, right, I'd like mm. you to pull away. So the examiner's pausing a bit if the pupils think, mm, what's he put on? Oh, so it is an absolute classic, isn't it? It's certainly. It's almost like you've yeah. not finished that manoeuvre, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, so they're just waiting. Yeah. yeah. A bit like if you're doing a first park and your wheels aren't quite straight, they just give you that little bit of time to, oh, something's up here. So just, you know, informing the pupils that take, to take that hint, really, I think mm. is a useful tool, isn't it? And to, I know that I certainly was weak on this, sort of in the early stages, particularly, of, of not putting my pupils up enough and putting them away enough to yeah. practice this routine. To get this routine, we, as you say, we don't really have a particular routine, but to get them used to it and do it. You might do it on a mock test, but I know a lot of instructors don't do mock tests for whatever reason. And you're not practicing this thing then that they do on tests a few times, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know, three or four times because the angles start the uphill, downhill, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So to make sure you, you're incorporating this within your lessons a reasonable amount so, it, so they, they are going through a, a system or a routine. It is, and we've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure, in, a, in a, a chat fairly recently about how we seem to practice an awful lot of everything else yeah. just in our general drive, but mm. the whole moving off, I'm not a massive pulling over and discussing type of instructor, yeah. so um, you're absolutely right that I can have a pupil who is 30 plus hours in and we might be then focusing on some te test procedure and we may mm. well be moving in a lot and realising actually the judgement of moving in yeah. and the position of moving in because that's the way it came Absolutely. up I think wasn't yeah. it the, mm. um, and I think to me that comes under something normal. test preparation mm. as we call it. it's not getting ready it's not learning to pass the test it's learning what's involved in the test and sometimes out of the ordinary like pulling up and putting out a lot because as you say I'm sorry you I don't pull pupils up for that reason might pull up to the reverse part, but then they're not pulling away again, mm. they're going backwards again. Mm. So if they keep the signal, it's not the end of the world, mm. and invariably they just knock it off anyway, or knocks itself off when you steer. So mm. it's just bringing that reality in. It's the same as, isn't it? Do wrong right, if you go the wrong way, go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. But you need to go and practice that, mm. because just telling them doesn't, it, it needs to be a skill that actually practice for be able to enter their head, doesn't yeah. it? To be able to become a subconscious motion, as opposed yeah, yeah. to trying to remember it. Yeah. Something. So the third part of that is the moving off and uh, having misjudged somebody else's uh, speed or actions, oh, perhaps, yeah. and of course causing somebody else to slow down. Now, there's been a debate recently about the, pos the, the, the situation of popping a right signal on at the point where you're telling everybody you're going to move, but you're not going to move yet. You're just informing people that you're, well, that's what you're going to do and causing the cars that perhaps coming up from the road from behind you to stop and let you out. Mm. And the question with that has been, has putting that kind of, I guess, begging signal on made somebody change their actions or reactions or behaviour? And in which case does that constitute a fault? I personally, I don't like it. I don't like a people putting a right signal when we're not going to move and causing somebody else to, to stop. Now, the examiners that we've talked to have said that is not the case. Mm. They have said that if you put a right signal on yet you're not actually intending to move and somebody chooses to slow down, stop and let you out, that was their choice. Mm. 
mm. you haven't forced them to do it. That's different to popping a right signal on, moving and causing somebody to have no choice but to have to stop. So the choice becomes yeah. the person coming up well, the road from behind you. I know we disagree on this slightly. I, 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 I don't mind pupils doing it. I think, to me, it's like if you're turning right from a major to a minor road, if you're not turning the cars you're going to put in front of you and saying, I want to turn right, the ball's in your court now, what, what do you want to do about it? Mm. You're quite right to ignore it and just carry on because that's your priority, of course. But at least they're informed and you can inform the vehicle behind. And I think with the pulling out from the side of the road, like we're parked in an area here, it's quite busy. I'd put a signal on because the person might want my space and therefore that then gives me the opportunity to go out and they get a space. Maybe and it's we, the timing of that though, yeah, isn't it? Exactly, if, if you're exactly timing experience a signal where you've whacked a right signal on, yeah. at the point where I was driving past a learner, in fact anybody, I won't be discriminatory, driving yeah. past anybody who's sitting at the side of the road who pops a right signal on at the point where I know that I would not be able yeah. to do anything mm. if they suddenly moved off. It does give me that kind of second second look. Well yeah, you wouldn't signal as they're sort of in your blind spot area or within a couple of car lanes. You'd signal the, a bit down the road and they could slow down gradually and let you out and not emergency stop in the middle of a flowing traffic. But I think sure, that sure. that's the routine again, isn't it? Middle mm. mirror, right mirror, pop a signal yeah, on and then so. I'll wait. It's all just a little and bit... And do people routine. have enough experience or judgment to be able to do that mm. safely? And that's the other argument, isn't mm. it? And again, if we're not practicing on a regular basis, where are they mm. going to get that experience mm -hmm. and ability to judge? And the other thing that came up the other day, this is probably another video on completely on its own, is the walk cross drive across wall. Mm. That's a situation where you possibly you couldn't use it because we know it doesn't work but what pe instructors may be using it saying well if you could walk across and walk back in you could put out in this space mm. but there's lots of variables why that doesn't work um look at the other videos but that's a situation where i can see it also being used not a situa situation i've ever used it but i can potentially mm. see where that could be well if instructors are looking for some kind of tool to use when yeah. we struggle to teach judgment yeah. that's the bottom line we do struggle to teach judgment mm -hmm. because what different. factors do you and i take into account when we're looking to make a decision about whether we're moving out and that again comes down to experience 25 and that's years why experience are, are, are bibbed out or not bibbed out and yeah. using every situation you put out to to add that experience yeah. where people's only have 40 hours 30 hours whatever and that's yeah. not a lot of experience particularly if you've only pulled out three times yeah. i've had uh, you know a couple of um experiences now of, of um, people on part three and or a standards check where they have made that just the purpose of the whole lesson mm. has been to be looking at judgment when pulling out from the side of the road clearly with the people who's needed it because they've showed that they've needed that and that that's been really fascinating lessons fascinating conversations that have happened so maybe that is the um the, the message from this video is to look at moving off safely three things that constitutes a, a, a driver fault or um, obviously a serious fault for um, for those and just revisit what we're doing in our lessons yeah so you treat it a bit like a maneuver and practice it a bit really mm. but I think there is possibly that I can sort of look back on my own I think Matthew maybe don't or didn't practice that enough sort of thinking of it as a maneuver and they do it four or five six times on test so it's absolutely a maneuver isn't it so I think I think that's the that's the point really not to be confused with moving off under control, which of course does come under your top tens, 10, so we will be looking at that. Right, okay. Okie dokie. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.